four former athletes are celebrating a victory tonight. They didn't win a race. They won the right to their own voices to speak publicly and openly. And tonight, they're coming to the National First to talk about their abuse at the hands of a former coach. In the 1990s, Bertrand Charest trained some of Canada's best young athletes as a national ski coach, and he took advantage of that position of trust. It wasn't until late last year that a Quebec judge found him guilty of 37 sex-related charges involving nine victims. All but one of them was under 18 at the time. Charest is appealing both the verdict and his 12-year sentence. And now, with the lifting of a publication ban and before a news conference tomorrow, four of his victims are speaking out about what happened to them and warning why it could still happen to others. How old were you when, when he focused on you? 17. That's when it started? Yeah. The first touching, I was 12 and then 15. This conversation didn't have to happen. A publication ban could have kept the names and faces of these elite athletes private forever. They were, after all, just kids when they were sexually abused by their ski coach, Bertrand Charret. He's in jail. They're grown up. But there is unfinished business, so they fought the ban in the name of talking. I have three kids. They are uh, seven, six, and 60 months. And when I talk about them, I'm sorry. I'm really emotional because I don't want them to go through what happened to me. I don't want them to be on a professional, provincial team or at a national team right now with the rules are in place because it's not safe for them. You really believe that right now they're not safe? No, they are not. This is a striking thing to say, and these aren't just words. In the next few days, they will outline what they think needs to change in sports in Canada to protect kids in ways they say they weren't. There was a time when Alpine Canada was made aware of some of the abuse, they said, but to them, the response didn't feel like justice or resolution. I feel that we didn't get the support we were support, supposed to have by a federation. I felt that I had done something wrong. There was a lot of shame. Sheree manipulated them as teens to keep what was happening secret, kept telling them it was love and normal. It's a picture of me um, when the abuse was taking place. They were isolated for years, not telling friends or parents or each other what was happening. And me being one of the first one, I, I feel there's some guilt that I still feel every day and shame. It, it, you hope it goes away, but I don't think it will ever go away. If you've ever heard victims of sexual abuse talk about how the trauma stalks and changes them and wonder what that looks like, it looks like this. He was do, doing stuff when I was walking up the stairs. He was following me. So now, 37, I am scared when I walk up the stairs. I always look back and, um, yeah, but people can't follow me up the stairs now. I mean, that's from him. That's from years ago. Despite the abuse she suffered on the slope, jean vivre Simard remained competitive in the sport she loved, representing Canada at two Winter Olympics and the World Cup. All the while, the trauma was a secret. And now that she and the others are finally talking openly, they may soon find they aren't alone. Eight other women whose identities are currently protected may yet speak out. Now you heard jean vivre Simard speaking there at the end of the story. She is the one who went to the police finally in 2015. She had seen Charest in a store and realized he was still coaching. And it so rattled her that she hid behind some stairs in the store. And it all just sort of came together that there was the potential for more kids to be hurt. Now, Alpine Canada has apologized to Chachet's victims and admits it could have offered them more support. It also says it learned from the situation by rewriting its policies requiring mandatory training and improving governance. And in a statement tonight to The National, its president said, we are committed to further strengthening our safety program to ensure no one ever suffers like these women have suffered.